Magic Tea House, Book Number Fifty Two, A Merlin Mission, Soccer on Sunday, by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapter Three. Hurry up for the World Cup! Look in Sir Henty's. Jack pointed to a sign on a large building that said "Mercado in Sir Henty's." That's it. The metro we're supposed to catch. Come on! Jack and Danny joined the crowd heading into the in Sir Henty's building. They strolled down a corridor between stalls selling ponchos, beaded bags, wooden animals, baskets woven with palm leaves, and silver jewelry. Tons of silver jewelry. The smell of sizzling meat came from food stands. Nothing looked like a chain or a subway station. Finally, Jack stopped near a group of men in sombreros playing guitars, violins, and trumpets. He turned to Annie. "This doesn't feel right," he yelled above the noise of the music. "We must have made a mistake," Annie yelled back. "Let's get out of here," said Jack. "We're wasting time." He and Danny turned and hurried back down the corridor between the stalls. They wove around shoppers until they escaped through the entrance of the giant market. A soft, warm rain had started to fall. I don't get it," said Jack. He pointed to the sign on the building. It says Mercado in Sarhentes. Look at Benny's notes again," said Annie. Jack pulled out their directions. "Oh no," he said. "Benny wrote Metro in Sarhentes, not Mercado in Sarhentes." "I'll ask for help," said Annie. She took the directions and walked over to an old man reading a newspaper on a bench. "Excuse me, sir. Where is Metro and Sir Hentes, please?" The old man pointed up the street. "Thanks," said Annie. She ran back to Jack and handed him the sheet of directions. Jack stuffed it into his backpack. "Hurry, or we'll be late," Jack said. Jack and Danny ran up the street through the warm, drizzling rain. They stopped when they came to an overpass jammed with trucks and cars. In a sunken plaza below was a round concrete building covered with posters and murals. One sign on the building said "Plaza Insurgentes," another said "Metro Station." That's it," said Jack. He and Danny ran down to the plaza. They hurried by a fountain, vendors, and snack bars until they came to the rounded entrance of the metro. When they stepped into the station, the noise was deafening, even louder than in the market. Hordes of people were rushing up and down the stairs. Jack and Danny joined the stream of traffic going down. Beyond the stairs was a row of turnstiles. How do we do this? said Annie. Watch what everyone else is doing, said Jack. One at a time, people were dropping a single coin into slots in the turnstiles and then passing through. Jack pulled two pesos out of his backpack and gave one to Annie. Copying everyone else, they passed through the turnstiles onto the metro platform. That wasn't so hard," said Annie. Another huge crowd was waiting on the sweltering platform for the next chain. Jack pulled out their directions again. Red line to Pino Suarez," he shouted to Annie above the noise. 
then the blue line to Taxquenya. Then we get off at the last stop and get a tram to Az Tech Stadium. Easy, yelled Danny. Really? Thought Jack. A train was rolling in. Red line, Annie shouted to a woman. As the woman nodded, the metro train came to a stop. The doors opened. As passengers spilled off the train, people on the platform surged forward. Jack grabbed Annie's hand as they moved with the crowd. But before they could even get close to the chain, a bell rang and the doors slammed shut. The people left on the platform jumped back as the chain pulled away. We'll get the next one, Jack shouted. Soon another chain rolled in. Jack grabbed Annie's hand again and they surged forward with the crowd. They were pushed and shoved as they tried to get through the doorway. Finally, they were inside. Safe, said Jack, collapsing onto a seat with Annie. But they were nearly squashed as more passengers piled into the metro. More and more kept cramming in until people were practically sitting on Jack's and Danny's laps. The bell rang. The doors closed. The chain pulled away from the station. As it rumbled through the dark tunnel, the air in the car was suffocating. Jack could feel sweat trickling down his face and the back of his neck. What's our stop? Annie yelled to Jack. Jack reached into his back pocket. The paper with the directions weren't there. He wrestled his backpack off his back and looked inside. The sheet of paper wasn't there either. Do you have our directions? He shouted at Annie. No, you had them, said Annie. I must have dropped them, said Jack, panicked. Don't worry, said Annie. Excuse me, she yelled up at a woman standing over them. How do we get to the Aztec station? The woman shrugged. Then she asked a man who asked another woman. But the chain stopped and all three people hurried off without answering Annie's question. Should we get off too? asked Annie. I don't know, said Jack. We don't know if this is the right station. They're not announcing where we are. New passengers piled into the car, and the aisle became even more crowded. Once again, as the chain took off, Jack and Danny were squashed in their seats by the crush of passengers in the aisle. Where is Aztec Stadium? Jack yelled to no one in particular. Get off at Pino Suarez, a man shouted above the roar. The man said more, but Jack couldn't hear him. Before he could ask the man to repeat his directions, the chain stopped and the man pushed his way out the doors. Is this Pino Suarez? Jack shouted to Annie. He looked around wildly, trying to find a sign. This is a nightmare. Is this Pino Suarez? Annie yelled to a teenage girl with a large backpack. Sorry, I don't know, the girl said. Check the map. She pointed to a large map on the far wall of the chain. Let's look, said Jack. But it was impossible to get to the map, as the aisle had already filled up with new passengers. Too late, said Annie. The metro doors closed, and the chain thundered on through the dark tunnel. Chapter 4 Follow Me Wait till we stop again, Annie yelled at Jack. But what if we just missed our stop, said Jack. What if that was Pino Suarez? 
"We're stopping again. We have to check that map," said Annie. As the train slowed for the next stop, Jack and Annie both got ready to jump out of their seats. But when the metro doors jerked open, hardly anyone got off. Instead, new travelers pushed their way into the crowded car. Jack and Danny hardly had room to breathe, much less stand up and check the map. No way! Jack shouted to Annie. "Can someone help us?" Annie called. "We need to get to the World Cup game. Where is the stop for Pino Suarez?" Nobody seemed to hear her. "This is hopeless," said Jack. Then he heard a small voice shouting above the noise of the chain. "Excuse me, pardon me, please." A Mexican boy squeezed through the crowd to get to Jack and Danny. "Did you say you are going to the World Cup game?" he shouted. "Yes," said Annie. "Me too," said the boy. "Can I help you?" "Yes," said Jack, relieved. "We don't know where to get off." "The next stop, Pino Suarez," said the boy. "You can follow me." As soon as the train stopped, Jack and Danny followed the boy, squeezing past people to get to the door. "Excuse me, excuse me," they said. Then all three of them popped off the hot, airless train. Half the people on the train got off with them. "Man, that was crazy," said Jack. He was covered in sweat. "Thank you." Annie said to the boy, "It's not over yet." The boy said, smiling. He had a cheerful, open face. We have to catch the blue line to Taxquenya. Can we come with you? Asked Annie. We lost our directions. Of course, said the boy. This way, pronto. Jack and Annie followed the boy down a tunnel and around a corner to the blue line. Hordes of people were waiting for that metro line too. My father told me to go to the end of the platform," said the boy. "The last train cars are never as crowded." As the train rolled into the station, Jack and Annie quickly followed the boy down the platform. They sped up when the doors opened. Just before the doors closed again, the three of them jumped into the last car of the train. The boy was right; the car wasn't crowded at all. They got good seats together. Jack felt hugely relieved. Thanks for helping us," he said. "You're welcome," said the boy. "My name is Roberto." He held out his hand. Jack shook Roberto's hand. "I'm Jack," he said. "And I'm Annie," said Annie, shaking his hand too. "Are you going to the game alone, Roberto?" "Yes. My parents gave me a ticket for my birthday present," said Roberto. It's the best present I've ever gotten. Is today your birthday? Asked Jack. Roberto nodded. I turn ten years old today. Happy birthday, Jack and Annie said together. I'm ten too, said Annie. Jack's eleven. Why didn't your mom and dad come with you? Jack said. They could only afford one ticket, said Roberto. I have eight brothers and sisters. It will be my job to tell them everything I see. They will all be waiting at home for my stories about the great game. He smiled his big smile again. The chain began to slow down. We get off here," said Roberto, standing up. Jack and Danny followed Roberto off the metro, down an underground passageway, then out of the stifling station into the breezy, wet air. Jack felt a thousand times better.
Now we take tram line 53, said Roberto. That's like a subway above ground, right? said Jack. Yes, come with me. Roberto led Jack and Danny across a walkway to the trolley tracks. Hundreds of people stood in lines waiting to board the packed trams. As they joined one of the lines, Jack pulled out some pesos. Everyone's going to the World Cup championship game, said Roberto. People have come to Mexico from all over South America and Europe to see this game. Did you hear that it would be the game of a lifetime? asked Jack. Absolutely, said Roberto. Did you know Pele was playing? Annie asked. Of course, Pele the Great, said Roberto. He has made over a thousand goals and his whole team is fantastic. They are called the beautiful team. That's cool, said Jack. Three pesos, said the driver at the door of the tram. Roberto reached into his pocket, but Jack stopped him. I got it, he said. Jack handed over three pesos. Thank you, Jack, said Roberto. Then they all hopped aboard the tram bound for the World Cup championship game. There were no empty seats, so they stood in the aisle and held on to a pole. As the tram began to move, Jack, Annie, and Roberto huddled together and talked excitedly. Brazil has the best team in history, said Roberto. But Italy has a great team too. Did you hear the story of Italy playing West Germany in the semi-final match? No, what happened? said Annie. Even though Italy was behind, they never gave up, said Roberto. Italy scored five goals in extra time. He heaved a big sigh. I can't believe it. I never thought in my life I would be here today to see this game. Me neither, said Annie. Jack laughed. Not in a million years. We'll arrive at Aztec Stadium soon, said Roberto, looking out the window. Thanks for your help, said Jack. He really liked this kid. He was also amazed that a ten-year-old could get around the city so easily. Do you go to the stadium a lot? No, this is my first time, he said. But I have practiced this chip in my mind many times. My father told me exactly what to do. Do you play soccer? Annie asked. I try, but I am not that great, Roberto said. Me neither, said Annie. I love it, but I'm not great. Same with me, said Jack. Love it, not great. And they all laughed. By the time the tram arrived at the station near the stadium, the clouds had disappeared. Bright sunshine had replaced the drizzling rain. Steam was rising from a gigantic parking lot. That's Aztec Stadium, Roberto said, pointing out the window to an enormous concrete building. Cool, said Jack. He looked at his watch. It's eleven thirty-five. Twenty-five minutes until kickoff, said Roberto. We made it. All because of you, Roberto," said Annie. "Stay with me," the Mexican boy said with a smile, "and I'll take good care of you."